guys, it's Lauren from Girly Knits and I'm so excited to be back with another machine knitting tutorial for you guys today. So today I'm going to be showing you how to knit my brand new design, which is this adorable top and skirt set. The top is this cropped sweater with these adorable puff sleeves and this keyhole in the back. And it has this coordinating skirt, which is super cute too. So this turned out to be a bit of a longer tutorial. So I decided to divide it up in five sections. In video number one, this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to do the front of the top. So I'm gonna be teaching you how to cast on and do this mock ribbing down here. And then there's gonna be a series of increase rows for the bodice. And then we're going to bind off for the underarms. And then I'm going to show you how we do this neckline. So I'm gonna show you how to put your knitting on hold and work one side at a time. And then work the short row shoulder shaping, which is at the top. In the second video, we'll be talking about the back. So the back is knit exactly the same as the front up to the underarm bind off and then I'm going to be showing you how to scrap off half your knitting so we can work the keyhole and work one side at a time and then I'll be showing you how to do the short row shoulder shaping and work the neckline putting that on hold and doing decreases at the same time. In the third video, we're gonna be talking all about neck bands. So I'm gonna be showing you how to knit the neck band on your LK150, which is a really fun thing to learn. And then in video four, we're going to be talking about sleeves where I'm gonna be showing you how to do these decreases for the puff sleeve on your machine. And I'm also going to be walking you through how I seam the sleeve to the shoulder. Now the sleeve on this design is actually really amazing. I know sometimes sleeves can be tricky. It can be challenging to seam them on and get them placed right but the sleeve is magical and that it just easily seems on and you don't have to do any special placements and so I'll show you how I do that and how easy it is and then in video number five we'll be talking about this skirt so the skirt uses the same techniques as the top it has the mock ribbing at the bottom it has a series of increases and decreases and then what I'll be showing you is how to knit this fold over waistband where we pick up the waistband and join it and then use a three needle bind off which creates this super stretchy waistband which is awesome you can find all the videos in this five part series linked below so if you're looking to learn a specific technique you can find those there and also in every video you'll see a list of times of every technique that I teach so if you're looking for something specific you can just check that list and skip exactly to the thing you want to learn if you'd like to get the pattern for this top and skirt set which includes a wide range of sizes and tons of up-close photos covering all the techniques I really designed my patterns with the beginner in mind you can find it linked below this video or you can always find all my patterns at girlyknits.com and you can always find me on Ravelry and Etsy as girly knits. The pattern also includes lots of tips for customizing this set. For example, if you want to make the skirt longer or if you want the neckline higher, I really include lots of information to make this set perfect for you. The yarn that I'll be using in today's tutorial is Lion Brand's Date Nights, which is a super fun, sparkly yarn. You'll see in the video, it just like sparkles so much. It is so much fun. It's super soft. It's really beautiful and it has amazing elasticity to it. Like it doesn't stretch out. So if you want to get this yarn, you can find it linked below. And for this pattern, you can really use any worsted weight yarn you'd like. I have used a variety of yarns for this pattern. So this top was made using Knit Picks Bravo Worsted, which turned out really cute for this one. I actually uh, eliminated the keyhole so you could do like a normal back if you'd like. And then this set was knit using Lion Brand's Pound of Love. Oh my gosh, this color is so fabulous. It's called Maze and it turned out super cute. As you can see, the top and skirt, adorable. And then another pattern that I just came out with, which uses the same exact techniques I'm showing you in this tutorial today, is this super cute dress pattern. So as you can see, the neckline and the shoulders and the sleeves and the back are actually knit exactly the same. It's just a dress instead of two pieces. And this has this really fun design feature with these cute bows in the back. So I actually have another tutorial where I show you how to knit these bows and how to make this keyhole back, which I will link to below. So you can find that tutorial as well. And the top and skirt I'm wearing is actually the hand knitted version of this design. So this is a hand knitting pattern as well. And for this set, I used Haiku Pop Cycle, which is this really fun yarn made out of recycled water bottles, which is really cool. So for this one, I actually held two strands of fingering weight together and I was able to get the same gauge. So the gauge we're working with today is 19 stitches and 27 rows equals four inches in stockinette stitch. So before you get started, make sure to check your gauge. I've used both T5 and T5.5 to get the gauge. So I would just check ahead, see which tension works for you. And I think we're ready to start. So thread up some waist yarn and your main yarn and let's get started. 
All right, so to start off, I'm going to cast on for my mock ribbing. And to do that, we're going to grab this tool, which is gonna select every fourth needle. So I'm going to be casting on 37 on the left and 36 on the right. And we're gonna start with the front of the top. We'll do the back after. <laughs> Hi, Ezzy. Okay, so we are gonna start with 36 over here. And then we're gonna keep going down until we have 37. So my main tension is T5.5. So for the mock ribbing, we're going to do 1.5 less than the main tension. So I'm gonna set my dial to T4 and then we're gonna thread our waist yarn and just run, and run the carriage across. Okay, so after that, we're going to hang our cast on comb. All right, and then once we do that, we're going to select every other needle so that, so we're gonna be working every other needle and have those in work. And then we're gonna run our carriage across again. And now we're just going to knit with our waist yarn for a few rows and until we have that going. And then we're gonna do one row with our ravel cord. So we're gonna end with the carriage on the left. So I actually ended with my carriage on the right. So I'll just grab that, move it to the other side. So we wanna start with our carriage on the right. So we're gonna place a ravel cord in the carriage and then just guide that along. That's gonna make it easier to take our waist yarn out later. Okay, so now we are ready to knit with our main yarn. So we're gonna set our counter to zero. And then for the top, we're gonna leave a 20 inch tail before we start. And we're gonna use that to seam our top later. So I'm just gonna measure 20 inches and then I'm going to place my yarn in the carriage and then take it across. Okay, and then I'm just gonna secure the yarn over here so that it's there. And then now we're just going to be knitting 50 rows, pretty easy, and that's gonna make a two and a half inch band at the bottom of the top, but of course you can make that longer or shorter if you'd like. This is what I've used for all the tops I've made and I like how it turns out, so we're just gonna knit up to row 50 and then we'll go from there. Also, you'll just wanna add your weights at some point too. We'll just add those and then continue on. Okay, so we've just knit our 50 rows and we're just gonna take our weights off and our cast on comb because we're going to get ready to hang the hem. And so to hang the hem, we just wanna take our one prong transfer tool and we're basically going to be filling in all of the empty needles from the beginning to the end so that now every needle will have a stitch. So I'm just gonna place that first one there. As you can see, I'm just picking up that first row of our main yarn here right above the ravel cord. So we're just gonna go in each stitch and hang it on every other needle and have those in work. And we're just gonna do that all across the row. So when you get towards the end, you should have exactly enough stitches to fill in every other needle. So if not, perhaps you missed one. So you can always go back and fix that. And then we're just gonna push our work to the back of the machine, like that. And now we're going to reset our counter to zero because now we're knitting the body of our top, the stockinette stitch portion. And we're gonna change to our main tension. And so mine is T5.5, so I'm just gonna go up to 5.5. 5. 
and we're gonna hang back our weights and then we're gonna do this joining row and this one sometimes stitches can drop so just do it slowly take your time And then after that row, just double check and make sure every stitch got picked up. Sometimes they drop on this row. So that looks good. And then now we just want to make it so that we have an even number of stitches on each side of the machine. When you're doing mock ribbing, you need a multiple of four plus one. So you always end up with this odd number. And then so we want to either increase or decrease on one of the sides so that we have the same number of stitches on each side. And the pattern will tell you which to do based on your size. So because I'm knitting the size three, I'm going to be increasing one stitch on the right side. But if you're knitting a different size, you might be decreasing on the left side. So just check the pattern to see what you do. All right, so I just did my increase there and then I should have a total of 74 stitches, which is going to be 37 on the left and 37 on the right. So I can just double check, that's how many stitches I have. And then we're ready to keep going. So at this point, we're just going to be knitting up until row 10, and we're gonna do our first increase row. So I'm just going to knit up to 10. Okay, so now I'm at row 10 and we're just gonna increase on one edge. And to do this, I just use my two-prong tool. We're just gonna transfer those stitches over. And then I'm just gonna pick up the little pearl ridge right here with my one-prong transfer tool. And we're gonna hang it on the needle next to it. And I like to pull out this fourth needle. It just always seems a little awkward to me, so I like pulling it out just to make sure that it gets knitted and nothing comes off or anything like that. So. I'm gonna just do this on the other side, pull that out, and then we're just going to continue knitting until row 20. So the way the pattern's written, we have an increase on row 10, 20, and 30, and at that point, we're going to be knitting a custom length. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do those next two increase rows, and I'll catch up with you after I do my third increase row on row 30. All right, so I'm on row 30, just doing my third increase row here. And we can just also double check our stitch count in the pattern. So I should have 40 on the left and 40 on the right for a total of 80 stitches. So I see that's correct. And so from this point, we can just go ahead and knit this row. And we can remove our ravel cord. Just as a tip, you just wanna get some knitting going before you remove it, otherwise it'll be challenging. So just pull that out. Now we can see our work so far. So at this point, you'll wanna decide how long you wanna make the stockinette stitch portion of your top. And this very well might be personal to you, depending on your bust size. So there are some recommendations on the pattern for how long to make it, but really if you want like a perfect custom fit for you, what I would recommend is trying on a fitted shirt and marking on the shirt right below your bust. So like right here below your bust to see like where that hits because that's ideally where you want your ribbing to be for the top to be the most flattering. And so if you mark it with like a, a safety pin or some painter's tape or anything like that, then you can measure from that point to the underarm and that's how long you wanna make this section of the top. Of course, if you wanna make the top longer and you don't want it to be a crop top, you could of course make it longer. I know that I like to have mine be five inches for me. So I'm just gonna see where I'm at right now. So I'm at about four and a quarter. And so at this point, you just wanna knit up until that measurement. And then at that point, we'll start our underarm bind off. All right, so I've just knit up to row 36 and I'm just measuring. So it's about five inches, maybe it's a little more, that's okay. And also just another note, you just wanna take note of your row counter so you can make the back the same. So I'm gonna write down that I did 36 rows and then I'll make sure to knit up to 36 on the back as well. Okay, so for this next section, we're starting the top part of the top. So we're gonna reset our counter again to zero. 
And then we're gonna bind off at the beginning of the next two rows, depending on what size you're making. So for the size three, I'm gonna be binding off five stitches on each side. So to bind off, we're just going to transfer the last stitch over to the stitch next to it. We're gonna take our yarn out of the carriage and then we're just going to place it in the hook and then pull it through and then you'll have a stitch bound off. So we're just going to do that until five are bound off. And this isn't the prettiest bind off, but you won't really see the underarm, so that's fine. We don't have to worry about that. Just make sure that it's um, a loose tension, like the tension lines up with the knitting. Make sure it's not too tight. Okay, so that's my fifth stitch, and then we can just see that looks good. Then we're gonna place our yarn back in the carriage, and then we're just gonna knit that row. All right, now on the left side, we're just gonna do the same thing. We just got the last stitch, so I did the stitch next to it. We're taking our yarn out of the carriage. We're placing it in the hook, just from the direction that the yarn is coming from. So that's one, two, three, Okay, so now we have our bind offs. We're gonna put our yarn back in the carriage, take it across. So now we're on row two, and from here on, we're going to be doing some underarm decreases. And again, this will depend on your size. The pattern's gonna tell you exactly which rows you're going to do the decreases on. For the size that I'm making, there's going to be a total of five at the underarms, and those are all gonna occur on even rows. So I'm going to be decreasing on two, four, six, eight, ten. So while we're doing our underarm decreases, we're actually going to be starting the neckline at the same time. So you'll have to pay attention to the rows and um, keep track of your decreases at the side so that you can do them simultaneously. And each size is gonna have the neckline actually start on a different row, so you wanna pay attention to that. And also this is designed to be a scoop neck top. And so if you want it to be a little higher up or you want more modesty, you can start the neckline at a later row and that's totally fine. So, you know, just like before with like looking at like the length that you wanted here, you could try measuring a top from the underarm to the neckline to get an idea of how high you want it to come up. Noting that we'll also be knitting a neckband which will add about three quarters of an inch too. So just keep that in mind. But um, yeah, you can really start the neckline whenever you want, but the way I have it written for the size three is that we're going to start the neckline on row four. So we're just gonna go ahead and do our first decrease row for row two. So to decrease, we're just uh, using our two prong tool. We're transferring those two stitches over. It's gonna create a decrease. I like using a two prong tool in general for decreases. Um, it leaves a salvage stitch for seaming and then it just keeps the decreases at the edge. But of course you could use like a three prong if you wanted to, if you wanted more spacing between the decreases at the seam. But I find the two prong is a, is a good one to use. So we just set up our decreases. So we're just gonna knit two rows. And now we're on row four where we're going to start our neckline. So to start the neckline, we are going to be putting half of our knitting and hold, this left half here, and we're also going to be putting additional stitches for the neckline and hold. So for this size, we're gonna, no matter what size, you're going to put all of these stitches and hold and deposition. And in order for those to be in hold, we're going to change the levers on our carriage from two to one, so both sides should be on one, and when they're in that position, they won't knit needles that are in deep position because we want these to not be knit. And then so in addition to the whole entire left half, we're going to add half of the center neckline. So the neckline for the size three is 12 stitches, so I'm gonna add an additional six at the center. Okay, so now we're ready to knit the right side of our top and we're going to be decreasing at the neckline more rapidly initially and then slower. So we're going to decrease at the neckline every row five times and then every even row five times. So I know it can be um, a bit to keep track of. It'll be a little easier to see how many stitches you've worked over here as you're knitting and I can show you that. 
And then again, the pattern has written out exactly which rows you'll decrease at the underarm, so you can always reference that. But um, to get started, we're going to decrease at the underarm. And then when I do this decrease, I usually take my needles out to deposition when I do increases and decreases. But because we're, um, our lovers are on one and they're not going to knit needles in D position, we have to make sure that they're in C position. So I'm just going to push them back a little. And then we're going to do a decrease at the neckline. And I'm just going to move my weight over here too. So just doing a decrease there. And then we just want to make sure this needle is pushed out of work because we don't want that one to be knit. That one is going away. So we'll just push that to a position or non-working position. And now we're ready to knit our first row that incorporates the neckline. So just going to move our carriage across. And then, as I said before, we're doing a decrease on the neckline every row for five rows. So I'm going to be doing it this row. Again, pushing these back to C position, moving that needle out of work, and drawing it across. And then for this next row, we're going to be decreasing at the neckline. It's our third one. And then we're going to be decreasing at the underarm again. Then we're going to be decreasing at the neckline. And then this time, this is, I can see this is going to be the fifth neckline decrease. And I can see that by seeing the five out of work needles here. So after this, we'll only be decreasing at the neckline on even rows. And then we're on row eight. So I know that I'm decreasing every even row up to row 10 at my underarm. So I still have two left to do on the underarm. So this one, we'll just go ahead and knit across and then knit again because there's no decreases that row. And then now we're doing our last underarm decrease since this is row 10. And then now we're doing every even row five times at the neckline. So I will just go ahead and do that. All right, so now I can see that I've done all 10 of my neckline decreases. I can count five, 10. And then also we can double check by looking in the pattern. I know that I'm meant to end up with 14 stitches after all the decreases, so I can count that I have 10, four, which is 14. And then at this point, we're just going to be knitting up to the shoulder. And so we're going to be knitting up to row 47, again, depending on your size and um, our carriage will be on the left since that's an odd row. So I'm just gonna knit up to there and then I'll show you the short row shoulder shaping. All right, so we've just reached row 47 and we're gonna do our short row shoulder shaping. So basically we want to create a slant here since this is the low point of our shoulder, this is the high point of our shoulder. So we're just basically creating a wedge here. And it's pretty simple. What we're going to be doing is partial knitting. So for the first row, be pulling out four needles on the right, again, depending on your size. And then that's gonna put them in holding position. And then we're going to knit across. And then for our next row, we want to wrap a stitch. And so we're going to automatically wrap a stitch by pulling out one needle on the right side and knitting. And that's gonna prevent any hole that could form there if, if we weren't to do that. So for this row, we're just going to knit across, that one stitch is wrapped. And then again, on the right side, we're just gonna pull out four needles, go across. And then we'll pull out this one needle to wrap it and then go across. And then that's it. So this last row is we're just going to be knitting across all of the needles and work those wraps that we made along with the stitches so that we're back to those 14 stitches with this newly formed wedge that we've created. And so to get these needles on the right side to be in work, we're gonna move them to C position. So I can just move them like this with my the back of this tool. And then when I knit, they'll all be in work. Okay, great. So they're all back in work. And then now we're just going to be scrapping off with waste yarn. So in order to scrap off, 
we just want to thread up some waist yarn. You'll notice I have all my waist yarn in little segments because <laughs> I, I like reusing it and so I have all these tiny little balls that I use for things like shoulders and necklines. Okay, so we're gonna take our yarn out of the carriage and we're actually going to leave a tail so that we can seam the shoulder later. So I'm going to leave a 20 inch tail. So let me take care of that first. So got 20 inches and we're gonna break that yarn and then we're gonna thread in our waist yarn and we're gonna scrap off. So to scrap off, you just want to knit with waist yarn. want like an inch or so maybe an inch and a half and then when you're ready to take it off the machine you just take your yarn out of the carriage and then move it across and that will remove all of the stitches so awesome so we've just move that over so you can see we've knit this half of our top we got our underarm bind off and shaping there and then we got our neckline shaping here so that's done so awesome so now what we're going to do is we're going to scrap off our neckline. So I'm just gonna hang our weights here. We're gonna get some waist yarn again. And then we're gonna move our carriage back over to the right. And I'm just gonna make sure that these needles that were used for our shoulder are pushed out of work. And then in order to just knit the neckline stitches, so I have 12 neckline stitches. I have six on the right and six on the left. So in order to just knit those stitches while keeping these in hold, we're just gonna again move these to C position so that they will be worked since our wrestle levers are still on one so that it won't knit needles in D position, but it will in C and B. And so we're gonna thread our yarn in and then we're just gonna scrap off the same way we did for the shoulder. And again, we're just going to run our carriage across that last row without the yarn in and it's going to remove the knitting. And just in case you're wondering why you might not remove the stitches that we're done with instead of scrapping off, if you were thinking like, could I put them on a stitch holder, or maybe a circular needle, which I definitely do sometimes. The waist yarn is actually handy because when we're seaming our neck band, that's going to be really helpful to know where to seam it, which will come up later. So I really like the waist yarn for that. And also just for the shoulders, we'll be doing a three needle bind off on the machine. And um, yeah, I mean, you could put them on a holder, but I just find it's easier to use the waist yarn. So I would recommend that. All right, so now we're going to knit the left side of our top. So we're gonna put the Russell levers back to two for now, because we want to work all of these needles that were in D position, but going back to two, they will all be knit. And then we just want to mirror what we did on the right side of the top. So same as the right side, we're going to have a total of five underarm decreases at the left side. So the left side is now our underarm and the right side is our neckline. And again, we can reference the pattern for what rows to do that on. We're gonna set our counter back to the row that we had when we started our neckline. So for me, that was row four. So I'm just gonna go back to that. And then I know that I had an underarm decrease on that row. So I'm just going to work that decrease here. It's a little tricky with these needles in D position, but just gotta help them along. So we have a decrease there. I'm just gonna move that needle out of work. And then we're also going to be decreasing every row for the first five rows on the right edge, which is our neckline. So I'm gonna set up that decrease there. Move that needle out of work. And then we're just going to thread our main yarn back in, place it in the carriage. So we're, we have our carriage at the right, we're on an even row and we're joining our yarn at the center and then we're ready to knit that first row. And then for the second row, I know I have another decrease at the neckline. Just gonna knit that. Just grab it onto this guy until we get going. We can use our 
um, weight there to secure it. And then we have an, this row on row six. We're decreasing at the underarm and the neckline. This is my third neckline decrease row. This is my fourth neckline decrease row. And then this will be the last every de every decrease row for the neckline. That's my fifth. And then row eight, so we're doing a decrease at the neckline or the underarm. <laughs> work that next row there's no decreases and then this one is my last underarm decrease because it's row 10 and then we're just doing every other row here five times and then a way that I can double check this now is I know that I'll end up with 14 stitches the same as the right side and so I can just um, use that as a gauge too where I can just be like okay I'll keep doing decreases at the neckline until I reach 14 so that's another way if uh, you lose track. All right, so this is my fifth every even row decrease for a total of 10. And I see I'm down to 14 stitches. So now we're just going to be knitting again until we do our short row shaping. And we're gonna start that on row 46. So we're just gonna knit up to 46 and then I'll catch up with you then. And just another tip, make sure you're engaging your row counter. I know it's a little far from where you're knitting, but just make sure you, you click that every time so you keep track of your rows. All right, so we're at row 46, and then for the short row shaping at the shoulders, we're just, again, mirroring what we did on the right side. So we're going to be using the holding position again. So we're going to be changing our Russell levers both to one. And then for this first row, just kind of like the last one, we're moving these four needles now on the left side because that's the lower part of the shoulder and um, opposite is what we did before. We're gonna move four to holding position. Go across, move one to wrap. Go across, four. Oops, go across, one. Go across. And then now we can actually just move both of our Russell levers back to two in order to knit all the stitches to join those wraps and get all of them back in work. Before we couldn't do that because we had stitches in holding, but now that we don't have anything in holding we need to be worried about, we can just do that and go across and then that's going to knit all of the stitches. All right, so again, we want to leave a 20 inch tail for seaming. And when we get to the back side, we won't have to leave a tail since we'll have it covered on this side. So we've got our 20 inches. And then again, we just want to scrap off with waste yarn. Get those needles out of work. And then there we go. We've got the front of our top. It's looking good. So yes, awesome. Hopefully things are going well for you. And now we're just going to be knitting the back. And then for the back, it's just basically knitted the same as the front, but we'll be making a keyhole. So I'm just going to be knitting up to the underarm bind off and then I'll catch up with you there and show you how the back is knitted differently. But other than that, it's exactly the same. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did make this top and skirt set, I would love to see what you made. Please share your photos on Ravelry, or tag me on Instagram, where I am girly knits. I would love to see your creations. And if you like this video, please let me know. Comment below and let me know what you think, and let me know what you'd like to learn next. Bye!